In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this exact particle logo animation in After Effects using the latest version of TrapKit Particular Plugin 18.0. You can download the plugin via the link in the description. With that said, let's jump to the tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition. All compositions created will be in 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. I'll name this one Render, then click OK. Then create another composition by clicking here. Name this one Logo, then drag your logo to the timeline. Press S on the keyboard and adjust the scale of the logo if needed. I'm going to set mine to 25, so it's roughly of this size. Then create another composition, name this one Logo Alpha, and drag the logo composition here. Then make sure it is not selected, then select the Ellipse tool, click and hold the Shape tool, select the Ellipse tool. Make sure that the fill is set to a solid color, the actual color does not matter. Then set the stroke to none, we don't need any stroke. Then from the center of the composition, click and drag, holding Ctrl and Shift keys to give the ellipse proportional dimensions. Create a simple ellipse like this. Then go to Effects and Presets, search for Turbulent Displace, add it to the shape layer created. In Effect Controls, set size to 50 and complexity to 10. Then make sure you are at the beginning of the timeline. While selecting the shape layer, press S on the keyboard. Create a keyframe for scale and set scale to 0%. Then let's move to 4 seconds. Increase the scale of the shape until it entirely covers our logo. So 100% should be fine in my case. After that, I'm going to right click the shape layer, pre-compose, I'll name it shape. Then click on toggle switches and modes until you see the track mat column and set the logo's track mat to alpha mat. And this will give us a simple logo reveal like this. Now let's open up the project panel and create a new composition. I'll name this one logo stripe and drag the logo alpha composition here twice. And we need to move the bottom logo alpha layer 5 frames back. So I'm going to move 5 frames forward from the beginning. Then move the top logo alpha layer to that point. Select both and move them backward. And then simply set the bottom layers track mat to alpha inverted mat. And this will give us this kind of expanding stripe. But if we go a bit past like uh, 4 seconds mark, we can see the outline of the logo is showing through. And we can easily remove it using the simple choker. I'm going to search for a simple choker in effects and presets and add it to the bottom logo alpha layer and set choker mat either to 1 or 2. So I'm going to set mine to 2. And now we can see that there is no more unnecessary outline of the logo. Let's go back to the project panel and create another composition and name this one emitter. Then drag the logo stripe composition here and also drag the shape composition above it. Then move the shape composition 10 frames forward, so let's move to 10 frames. And offset the shape composition to that point. Then set the track mat of the logo stripe to alpha inverted mat. And this will ensure that the particles are not constantly animating. Now let's go all the way back to the render composition. Then drag and drop the emitter composition here. Click on toggle switches and modes until you see this column and make the emitter 3D by checking this box and hide its visibility. Now go up to Layer, New Solid, I'll name this one Particles, then click OK. Go to Effects and Presets and search for Particular, then add it to the Particle Solid layer. Now head over to the Effect Controls panel and expand the Emitter dropdown. Here we are going to set Emitter Type to Layer, then uh, Particles Per Second to 500,000, Emitter Size Z to 50, then uh, Velocity set it to 0, then expand the layer emitter drop down. And here for the layer, let's choose the emitter. Let's move a bit forward on the timeline to see the changes taking place. Now let's scroll down to the particle section, open the drop down for particle. Then I'm going to set life to 2 seconds. Sphere feather to 0. Set size random to 100%. And then let's scroll down to the display settings, open that up. Then expand the turbulence field drop down. Set TF Displace XYZ to 50. Then let's scroll further to the Lighting section. Open the Lighting dropdown. Uh, Shadowlets. And select the Enable Shadowlets to give our particles nice shading. And those of you familiar with the old Tropco particular, remember that we used to have the Aux system setting that is, well, no longer here in the recent version. But you can still create the Aux system. It's just done in a different way. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, expand the Show Systems dropdown, and here you will see the primary system, and you need to click the Add a System. So click on that. That'll automatically open up the Designer window, and uh, I prefer to do the old way, so I'm just going to click Apply to close the Designer window. And now we can see that the System 2 has been created. We need to select it. It might not get selected 
the first time you click on it so you can just switch back to the primary system and then select the system 2 again and now we can see the emitter s2 so we're controlling the system 2 the first step you want to do is set particles per second to 10 make sure you do that before proceeding further because well your after effects might crash because you'll get too many particles then for the emitter type s2 click the drop down and choose emit from parent system and as you select it you can see that good old aux system and now we can adjust the settings of it separately from the parent system so let's scroll down and set velocity to 10 then let's scroll down further and set particles live to 0.5 seconds live random to 100 sphere feather to 0 percent then keep scrolling down until you find the color from parent option and set it to 100% to give the second system the same colors as the parent one. Now if we scroll down we don't see any extra options such as displace that we had for the primary system and those displace settings that we have applied to the primary system are not affecting the, the aux system or the second system. The second system is just copying whatever the first one is doing. So if you want to apply the displace uh, settings to the second system separately, you can still do that, but it's done in a different way. So again, let me show you how to do that. Scroll all the way up and open the designer window. Make sure you select the primary system down here. Then in the display section, you can see the fields. So just click on the fields and then click uh, copy up here. Then make sure you select the system 2. In the display section, there should be a plus sign for the field, so click the plus sign. Then choose the default field. Then simply move the cursor down, and this will open the settings. You can either use brand new settings or paste the settings that you've copied from the primary system. But I like to add more displacement to the aux system, so I'm going to set displace XYZ to 200. You can either do it here, but I like to do the old way, so again I'm going to click apply. To close the the start designer window and then if we scroll down here it might not show at first so we just switch back to the primary system then select the system 2 again and if you you know scroll down you can see that now we have display settings and you can find the turbulence field tf displays xyz and i'm going to set that to 200 and that's pretty much it for the particular settings now i'm going to add extra effect to enhance the look of the particles I'm going to search for CC Vector Blur in Effects and Presets. Add it to the Particle Solid. Then I'm going to search for Sharpen and also add it to the Particle Solid layer. I'm going to set the type of Vector Blur to Perpendicular, Amount to 12 and Map Softness to 12. Then Sharpen Amount to 100% and this will give our particles a nice liquidy kind of look. Now let's create a smaller amount of particles that would be scattered around the composition. So for that, uh, let's select the particle solid layer, go to edit, duplicate. Then I'm going to select the duplicated solid layer, rename it to dust. Then select all effects that it has and remove them by pressing delete. Then again, I'm going to search for particular in effects and presets and add a brand new particular to the dust solid layer. Let's quickly go over the settings. Let's open the emitter dropdown, set emitter type to layer, particles per second 10,000. Then emitter size Z to 50. Uh, let's leave velocity as 100. Then let's scroll down to the particle settings. Let's expand the drop down. I'm going to set live to 2 seconds, sphere feather to 0%, and uh, size random to 100%. Now let's uh, scroll down to the displace, then turbulence field, and I'm going to set TF displace XYZ really high to 800. And I forgot to set the emitter layer as the emitter for the particular, so let's scroll up to the emitter settings. Open up the layer emitter drop down and for the layer let's select emitter. And I will have a small amount of particles really scattered around the composition. At this point we've done the particles part. Let's now bring the logo reveal. Let's go to the project panel and drag and drop the logo alpha below other layers. Press S on the keyboard and set scale to 95%. Let's do a quick preview to see what we made so far. And as you can see everything turned out pretty awesome. So if you like the look of the particles that you created, you can unlock the layer emitter. Then select all layers and right click any of them, pre-compose. I'm going to name it final. Then I'm going to quickly add a background by going to layer new solid. I'll name it BG. And for the color, I'll choose really light gray like this. Then click OK. Make sure to put it below the final composition. 
Let's add a drop shadow to the logo or the animation itself. Go to effects and presets, search for drop shadow, add it to the final composition. I'm going to set direction to 180 degrees, distance to 30, and softness to 100 to nicely separate the animation from the background. Now let's see how the animation looks with the drop shadow applied. And as you can see, with the drop shadow it looks better, but we can improve it even further by adding a slight zoom out uh, throughout the composition. Let's move to the beginning of the timeline. Select the final composition and press S. Create a keyframe for scale. Set scale to 200%. Now let's go all the way to the end of the animation to 6 seconds. And set scale to 100. Then drag and select both keyframes. You can right click any of them. Keyframe assistant is ease. Then open the graph editor. Make sure you are working in edit speed graph. Then I'm going to select this point and drag the handle all the way to the left. And do the same with this one. Drag it all the way to the left. And your graph should look like this. And this smooth zoom out movement will make the animation a bit more interesting. And as always, the beautiful part about this animation is that it is completely procedural, meaning that if we jump into the logo composition and then bring in a different logo, so let me bring the Pinterest logo, press S to adjust the scale. Then I'm going to hide the previous Pepsi logo. Now if we open up the render composition, you can see that everything has been adjusted itself. You don't need to do anything extra. And now we have a Pinterest logo animation. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new in this tutorial. If you did, do not forget to leave a like. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.